Hello everyone, welcome back to A City Planner Plays City Builders, where we are still on pause. And uh, the reason we are still on pause is we are still building out this uh, this rail network. Uh, in the last episode, you, you'll recall that we uh, built our uh, Union Station, our central terminal for our commuter rail. Um, one of the things I didn't really discuss was why I picked this particular station uh, as, as opposed to the pass-through station. And a lot of that was due to the space constraints that I have. I think a pass-through station would be more difficult to configure and fit into the roadway network that I've already built. Um, but, you know, I, I could have tried to work with that as well. Uh, just personally wanted to go with this one. So I, I think that what I'm going to start out with is continuing to improve the... Uh, and, and build out the external connections to the cargo rail terminal. So we'll get started on that. And uh, there is something that someone pointed out in the comments that I thought was an excellent comment. There are no pass through or kind of uh, uh, places for trains to queue. So I'll add that after I get this path figured out. Um, what I've been thinking, and I think I might have mentioned this in the last episode a little bit, I'm going to bring this connection around the outside and I'm going to branch off here I have connections I'm going to, I'm going to maintain this uh, this connection on the outside but I think I am going to cross over and kind of loop back around here so um, that's something we'll be doing then we'll, we'll disconnect this um, this local terminal from this uh, this cargo network and still probably have it pass through there. Uh, the infrastructure is already in place, so we might as well reuse it. And uh, we'll, we'll make some more determinations from there. So without any further ado, I will get started. So let's see. So with all of these being mindful of, you know, space, future, future space, I think is really important. Um, because of that, I'm going to try to hug the road as much as possible here. That said, one of the things I did mention was that in the future, I want to build some more industrial uh, uses out here. So I think I am going to stub in a couple roads just so that I'm forced to create a couple bridges. So I'll stub one in there. Um, uh, with this road, the secondary road in, I think I want to have some separation uh, from the cargo terminal, but not too much. Okay, so I think that's good. And I'll start the incline here and continue it make sure I have okay I do have my road get guidelines on it's just a little bit challenging with that road that I've created I think that's just about right okay and I will drop it down as quickly as I can And I think that what I'm going to do is follow this highway until I meet that bridge and then mirror the interstate. I realized I never actually connected the cargo uh, train station to the uh, to the line I put together and that was a weird omission. So uh, this is a weird little insertion I'm gonna make into the video. I haven't done this before, but I feel like it's important enough that I address it. Um, so I'm going to make this connection. <laughs> I, I know that someone would, would notice that and uh, if it were me watching this video, I would absolutely notice that. All right, back to the normal video. And the nice thing about this is a lot of grading has already been done. 
so I'm, I'm kind of mirroring some of that work and I'll probably raise that up to be the same level as that as the highway okay so this is gonna be tricky And I think I'm going to try to come across with this bridge very close to the highway bridge. There's no real reason for that outside of I just think it would look good. Um, I, I do think that the, the terrain helps though. We will be a little bit higher. And if we can start that bridge a little higher up, uh, I think it would be a slightly cheaper bridge to build. Now crossing all of these roads is gonna be kind of a trick, I think, but I think we can we can accomplish it. Now actually let me take a look. We don't want to completely mirror that because we're gonna to want to just get on the other side of the highway. So we actually are gonna to want to start the turn back here. and then get back down as quickly as we can. Hmm. I don't think I'm exactly mirroring the highway, which I want to do as, as, as much as I can so that I'm at the same grade as the highway. Because afterwards, or afterwards I'm going to uh, try to get these at basically the same height if they're not already. Um, in reality, you'd, you'd probably hope to, to do this work at the same time as the highway. Obviously that wasn't the case with this particular um, build but that's okay all right so we're gonna have to do something a little com little little more uh, complex here so we want to be able to get this out here kind of mirror this path and provide a way to get in here from both directions so let's start out by eliminating some of that existing track. And I think I want to straighten this out a bit. All right, let's give that a nice smooth turn in. I think we're going to want to, so we're going to have two tracks coming from this direction. So I think it's okay if we add a secondary track next to this one. Now there's not a very big space in between this bridge. And if at all possible, I want to reuse the existing bridge. That wouldn't be something that would be I mean, reconstructing that would be basically impossible. At least from a financial standpoint. Not, I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, anything is possible, like, like Kevin Garnett would say. But um, From a feasibility standpoint, that project would never proceed if... Uh, if you had to demolish the bridge across the interstate. Um, so I think I want to straighten these tracks out and potentially use the parallel, the parallel tool if I can with these standard track. 
Train cargo track. And let's just see how this works. Well, that's not right. <laughs> well. All right, let's get back to our Parallel tool. All right, that looks a little more right. Ah. <laughs> okay. So let's see if I can do negative 10. Switch sides. Nope. Just playing around a little bit here, I just want to try to get this right if I can. Maybe it means that, that this little piece I laid I'm going to have to redo, and that's completely fine. And I think that is the path I'm going to go. I'll have to do a little bit more manual work once I get down here. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> that was not what I wanted to happen. Uh... All right, well, I appreciate everyone's patience as I stumble through this. Clearly having a, a bit of a rough go here, um, but I will get it figured out. Okay. I think I'm gonna start out, I'll just start out straight there. I'm gonna try to mirror the road again. And then we'll bring the track straight up, kind of with the road actually. I think here we can go straight. Okay, so I'll get out of this tool and now what I need to do is number one I need to link up to that existing track. And like one of the problems here is I'm not prioritizing that through movement. That is the priority movement. So, lots of deleting today. <laughs> Whoops. And then the other movement that we're going to want to focus on is actually getting Okay, actually. Hold on. All right, very good. Much, much happier with this now. Um, okay. So there's a bit of um, move it work that I should probably do. To get this at, you know, I honestly. It's not that bad. I might just leave it. I think it looks all right. Um, and it's gonna function the way I want it to. So one of the nice things about deleting this is it gives me one of those spurs that, uh, that I was talking about earlier. So I'm going to create one of those. I get rid of grid here. We'll have to restore that power and I'm going to take care of that right away so I don't forget because that would be what I would do is forget. <laughs> 
All right, so this will allow trains that are waiting to access the terminal. It'll allow them to to, to have a place to, 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 to wait, so. I think that is very beneficial. And then we will get all of these tracks leveled. Actually, let me... I don't really care about leveling trees and whatnot right here. Ooh, that is brutal. I think part of the problem is this is probably just a little bit too close, so... Uh, I know this isn't the most efficient way to do this, but as I learn some of these um, shortcuts, I am going to do what I know, what's efficient for me, and that is doing things manually. Okay, so we've got that. Like I mentioned, I want to get that power connected right away so I don't forget about it. And now we have our connection on the side. Now we're going to mirror... We're going to need to find a way to get our passenger rail around here as well. We'll, we'll, we'll get that fixed as soon as we uh, find a way to get this commuter line out of the city. We'll be very careful about this. All right, and we were able to preserve that bridge just fine. Um, so there is an opportunity here. So Evergreen Park, we could extend this potentially down to the waterfront. This is a something that would be pretty nice um, or allow more development if we reclaim some of this land by burying the track. Now, this is the one opportunity we have for it. So I might actually sink or raise some of these tracks. Um, sinking is probably a, a heck of a lot less reasonable for a city this size, so I'm probably going to elevate them. Not quite as aesthetically pleasing, but certainly uh, a little more practical. Um, you know, reasonably, the train company is not going to want to pay for that expense. So this is something that the city is going to have to take on itself. So unfortunately, that means that that expense is probably going to be best. Uh, it's, it's probably going to end up being elevated, but not, not for the entire run of it. So I think here we need to be really conscientious about where we might put our roads in the future. Um, this area has been a real challenge in terms of grade. I could see tapering this in the future um, considering what we might be doing with the commuter rail bringing this around the highway this could be the end so I think what I'm gonna do is focus on elevating it in this area so I think we're gonna bring the cargo rail down Let, let's who all right that is steep so we're gonna need to be really cognizant of this as well and actually this this might dictate more of what's happening than anything else we obviously with the train track need to keep it relatively level uh, so there's gonna be some grading that goes on but it can't be totally unreasonable which is where I was kind of heading so that said I might let's see yeah, I'm gonna elevate this I think that that's gonna be the way to accomplish this best and now I'm just giving myself the opportunity 
to get across here without a bridge with the road in the future. And if you think about the size of the deck on the train versus, and then the amount of utilization, that, that's gonna, that bridge is gonna last a lot longer and be a little bit cheaper. So, okay, get rid of that section of the, uh, the old passenger rail. And now we can meet up with our own old track. <clears throat> so that will work. Let's turn this off, see how it looks. So I think I, I'm going to want to improve this a bit. It's not going to happen now because I don't exactly know what this roadway network is going to look like. I will smooth it out a bit though to, well, to try to make it look a little better. We'll need to decrease the brush here a bit. All right. This is still ugly. <laughs> this road is still terrible and it still needs to be fixed. That will come soon. Uh, in a future episode, I kind of want to reimagine this entire area and maybe station area planning is going to be the way to get to that. I look at this as an excellent opportunity for a transit oriented development in the future. And when we do that, we're going to want to rethink about all of these connections. Um, when I originally design this, I was thinking of a suburban sprawl type area where a developer was really unconcerned about uh, the long-term prospect of transportation in this area, more concerned about the design of their particular plat. Um, now it's the city's problem and now we're going to need to think about how we can fit in new infrastructure without damaging buildings if possible. So this is going to be a real trick. I think it's going to be fun um, and I think that uh, it's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess stay tuned. Um, so okay, we have this. This is set. This is good to go. Um, one of the things I want to accomplish before we end this video uh, for today is to figure out how we're going to connect these two train stations to our terminal. So. I've been going back and forth about this. Um, I think I want to try to get two train lines, two parallel lines out. They may branch off. Um, so first of all, I've gone back and forth about um, whether or not I want to get a passenger rail line stub not going anywhere uh, for potential future expansion out near the airport. Now couple things to, that I've been thinking about. Uh, originally, I planned on having a cargo um, airport over here. It's flat. This isn't a very logical location for that reasonably. It's really far from all of our industrial activity. I'm thinking that that may go over here. So that would reduce the need for a cargo hub and open this up to, to, to some some residential development most likely, probably not higher end development. A lot of times you'll see um, you know, middle to lower middle to not so great residential housing near airports. Uh, variety of reasons for that. You know, Think about the air quality. Um, there have been studies that have actually shown that people who live near airports ha uh, have higher levels of cancer. So it's not a good thing to live next to an airport. Um, there's also rumble. I can attest to this. I lived by an airport and uh, th there was a flight that would go over my house at noon on Sundays. So as I'm watching Packer games um, and I was using you know, rabbit ears, a flight would go over my house and the game would cut out momentarily and my windows would shake. And that's to say nothing about uh, there's, a, there's also a military base nearby um, that uh, often had jets flying out when those would go through my whole house would shake so those are less desirable areas to live clearly because of some of those concerns so some things to think about probably not gonna get a lot of density near there they're gonna be uh, height restrictions when you have an airport there's generally a, uh, a, a zone where there would be height restrictions based on the flight path that's a little difficult to figure out here um, but we could kind of watch that and figure that out the other thing to contemplate is 
you know, Bluffside Crossing is getting bigger. We might want to upgrade this airport to an international airport uh, or just add another airport in this area. So that's something to think about in the future. Um, but I think because there's a lot of uncertainty about what we're doing over there, I just want to add in kind of a placeholder line that, you know, have these bumpers here. We're going to do something with it in the future. We don't know what it's going to be yet, but it's going to be something. Um, so then we're going to have our line that goes out to meet these two areas at a minimum. And I'm trying to think about whether it would make sense to have a bypass to these two areas to get over to the shopping center, Robin Square, uh, in the Sunset District, and that might be something that is desirable too. So I'll probably add another line and then also have a way to cross between these different lines just in case there's a, a need. And I'm, I'm not sure that I can fully accomplish this the way that I was imagining. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. Okay. Well, we'll look at the busier one. Uh, what is likely going to be the busier one is this line, which will go to um, probably a, a few more uh, stops than the other the other the other will so okay so we'll work to get these started and again I want these to be really clean So I've really been giving a lot of thought as to as to how I meet up with this line, and you know I have this going underneath. It's kind of defining the neighborhood. Uh, the terrain is what really led to this uh, particular line. I mean, it, it defines the neighborhood. Uh, but there was a cliff here, and that's the reason why the line is where it is. Um, so I don't think we're going to want to get rid of all of that. I know I just created this, unfortunately. It was infrastructure that wasn't meant to be. I shouldn't have uh, built this here. <laughs> that was bad planning, and now uh, the new planner's in town to fix it up, I guess. <laughs> it's one of those uh, uh, you know, funny planner things that we will often do. We'll talk about planning that occurred before um, we were with the community, as opposed to the planning that has occurred since. We were with the community, and uh, just kind of a funny, funny thing I think. Um, so I could, I could bury this. Um, I think that would be desirable, but we have some of our kind of lower, um, lower income housing. So I guess I'm not overly concerned, uh, or in this particular area, so I'm not overly concerned about noise. Uh, this is also kind of the transition between our industrial area and our uh, and some of the things that are happening over uh, uh, some of our residential and commercial uses. So again, not overly concerned. I do I know that I want to make this connection, this roadway connection from our post office over to this collector, though. So I'll make that now before I think about this connection I think I might need to keep it elevated now that I look at it a little bit more so I'll bring that along the side of the post office here turn my grid back on mm, don't want it to be quite so intense Okay. Okay, maybe if I just bring it out a little bit. All right. 
That's always kind of a trick to to get the heights just perfect. Clearly want to, to not be elevated any more than you have to. Um, bridges are expensive as I've as I keep keep repeating so <laughs> that's why you see me get so finicky with bridges um, you just it's not reasonable to have a bridge that's any higher than it needs to be so I think I might have actually gone with up with my elevation on the wrong side of the road here so thankfully I can I can remedy some of that And then we'll slope this to smooth that out and fix the terrain a bit. You guys probably have noticed that I often hit the economy uh, button. That's just kind of a, a weird quirk of mine. Mistake I often make, so very sorry for that. We're going to need to reimagine these power lines too. Uh, we've basically knocked out all of them at this point. I'll worry about that after I get this rail uh, line figured out. through here so I dropped that down that was the wrong choice <laughs> and it, I think 12 meters is kind of the expectation anyway um, if you want to be able to get a road underneath it whoa I went the wrong direction there <laughs> still going the wrong direction maybe sloping that'll do the trick this is still a little bit ugly over here so let's do a little bit more work trying to get this to be as reasonable as we can. All right, that is much better. Could probably do a little bit of work there, but I'm not going to bore you with that. That's a lot of minutia. <laughs> and we will remedy that at some point. So our power connections... I think rather than trying to connect up to downtown... Um, I'm just going to bring this over to our industrial area over here. So, uh, one of the comments that I saw that, that cracked me up was we have these solar updraft towers near the uh, industrial area and I, you know, I didn't even think about when I was uh, when I was placing them, how ridiculous that seemed to put a solar updraft tower near dirty polluting oil. Uh, but it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a darn good comment. The reason why I even placed these uh, was the lack of vehicles needed to go to them. I hate to have a traffic jam lead to the city not having power. <laughs> so uh, being, uh, being greener with the, with the power makes sense to me. But I like that comment. I want to move these at some point. Um, not a reasonable thing to, to move a plant like that, but it's certainly something that would make me happier. So I'm going to do it. Um, I, I think I also want to... This this track has bugged me, the way it looks, since I think it was episode... I don't know. Three or four that I put this in. So we're just going to straighten this out, fix it up. We're going through here, making a ton of improvements to our train network so there's no reason why we can't you know completely remedy this and boy oh boy do we need to separate grade separate well there's not really a way to um, cleanly anyway that might be a future project too. You come back to these areas and you just see things that you wish you would have uh, accomplished the first time around and that's one of the things I love about this game is you just, you're never done. You, you always have an opportunity to improve things, make it a little bit better. Um, and I find it really gratifying to be able to make those changes. 
Ah, Sports Clips is in the way. Bye, Sports Clips. <laughs> and I say that as someone that loves Sports Clips. Love going there. <laughs> Oh, wow. I don't know that I'm making things better. I think I might be making them worse. <laughs> okay. All right, let's try this one more time. Okay. Nope, that is not right. <laughs> I am uh, struggling a little bit here. I think that that's pretty common with rail. It's it's finicky, and you want to make sure you get it just right because, especially when you when you think about how much you'll be developing around it, you don't want to get it wrong. So I'm going to try to get this to be the same level as the road that it's near. Okay. So I think this will need to drop down a bit to make that slope a little little better. Ooh. All of this is terrible. Oh no. <laughs> okay. I think I'll have to do some more work here, and that might be a nice topic for a future episode, or a, ni a nice thing to tackle in the next episode. Right now, I think I just want to make sure I get everything connected. Um, and I guess right now, make sure that this uh, train isn't floating too much. <laughs> okay, so we've got this, got our main track. And we'll get this connected up again. All right, after we figure out some of these grading issues, and maybe now that I'm looking at it, you know, it is just a bridge that we need. This, this isn't, I just don't love this. <laughs> Sometimes that's, that's kind of the way it, the way it works. Maybe this will... Maybe if I raise this up. Yeah, that looks terrible. Um, I'll give that some thought. Because I'm not pleased with how this... Actually. I don't need to give it thought. I'll just fix it now. Yeah, this is certainly an area with some some challenging topography and that might be the best remedy that we have for it is, is actually raising that up so you can see it's very similar to the the track that we had before just a little a little more a little more gentle I, I think um, so just one more little segment I think it will be easier to not get very close to this cargo train terminal. So we might actually run it along the other side of the road. So we'll start this over here. It's gonna be a lot of train stuff happening over here. <laughs> So let's get our new path lined up here. Hmm. It's always a little finicky. I want to be as 
mindful of space as, as I can. Let's keep it going. I think some of this I'll have to clean up on my own. Um, I like to, to keep things equidistant if at all possible, but it's certainly going to be a challenge with all the curving that's happening in this area. If it's not perfect, that's okay. But I'd like to make it at least passable. <laughs> All right, so I think we're getting close to the end of this episode. Um, I apologize. I know that I was pretty quiet in, in certain parts of this as I, as I really kind of went through my thought process. This stuff can be kind of tricky, um, and it just you, you got to think about it a little bit more than some other stuff. At least in in my, at least for me. <laughs> Maybe it's not the same for you, but uh, it is. That's that's kind of how it is for me. So I appreciate your patience with my awkward silences today as I <laughs> thought through some of these challenges. Um, with this particular episode, I've given a lot of thought to the way that I want the overall network to lay lay down, um, but I've been really reluctant to actually go out and build everything prior to the episode like I normally do and the main reason for that is I know the outcome and that is that I will build this network perfectly uh, I will be very happy with it and then I will try to reproduce it <laughs> live and not like it as much so I don't want to do that if at all possible okay so our last connection will be through here the last section for today anyway. We are, we are nowhere near done. We've got some of our more interesting stuff coming up. At least in my estimation, and in my opinion, in the next episode. Get this back to the ground again. Break this off and get this connection made. All right, we did it. It's 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 done. <laughs> that was a, there was a lot there. This was there was a lot in this episode, but I'm I'm pretty pleased with with how everything turned out. So there's more work to do. We're gonna need to get this. Um, we're gonna need to mirror this path, which might mean a little bit more uh, tedious work. But we have this other connection. Well, I got to think about this. I'll think about this more before the next episode. Um, but we're going to want to make this other path reach up to Apple Square, uh, Lower Hillcrest, and our uh, commuters uh, or our uh, our, uh, our uh, tourism district and IT district. A couple ways to approach that. That could be branching off here, um, or it could be having a whole another line in this area. Um, it would be nice to be able to loop some of these. I, 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 the plan wasn't to have a radial uh, network that, that only allows you to get to downtown. It was to have a network that could get you from suburb, uh, suburb to suburb. I think that's where a lot of American transit systems fail, is they are excellent for getting you from your suburb to your downtown, but not from your suburb to your suburb. And more, uh, it's becoming more and more common that people work in one suburb and live in another and uh, never need to go to the downtown area. So I want to be aware of that and cognizant of that. Um, and when you think about how much employment is over here, it is totally reasonable that you live in uh, Clifton Gardens and work in Foggy District and want to take a train to work and don't necessarily want to go to downtown Bluffside Crossing to, to accomplish that trip. That's, that's pretty pretty unreasonable. So we will do some thinking about that and maybe it is having uh, a line that, that approaches this way. 
uh, and also connects up with this train station over here. Just gotta give that a little bit more thought um, and really think about the way to be most efficient with, uh, with all this track. And that might mean that we uh, have a couple trains going down this new track that we, we put together. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I know this was a little bit longer than our normal episodes. I think the next one's going to be two. Um, I'd love to be able to complete this in the next episode. Um, we'll see. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining. Uh, if you like this video, please consider liking it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing that. And hit the notification bell if you want to know when I release new videos. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.